guys, Dave Nader 1, 2, and 2. Today's another deck profile day for you guys. I'll do something different, play a little something older, because, you know, even though it's a new format, we still don't quite know what the best decks are going to be, and they seem like they're going to be the same decks as anyway, so it's kind of boring. So I want to play something cool. So I decided, hey, you know what? Spellbooks is a really fun, old, powerful deck. Let's see what we can do with that and modernize it for the, you know, current meta. Without Spellbook of Judgment, the deck does suffer from a couple of problems like, all right, you can loop and loop and loop and loop, but ultimately you can't really do anything with all the cards you've gained. And pretty much it comes down to how big can you make Blue Boy, and if you can't make him big enough to keep poking your opponent, oh, well, I guess you can't win. So let's try a different approach. All right, guys, here's the deck. Let's get started. As you can see, it's kind of an interesting build of spell books, utilizing the counter fairy engine as a way to kind of give it a, oh, je ne sais quoi, to in order to give it a bit of a power boost and a push towards a competitive edge. The spellbook engine is <laughs> nothing revolutionary. Let's get the free magician of uh, prophecy, the blue boy. One master and one power, because I figured uh, these guys are really useful, but they are pretty searchable and you really only use them once, so one is fine. I would like two copies of each though. One eternity, three secrets, uh, that's your main searcher. One wisdom, I always want to drop this card because I never need it, but when I do need it, it's like really good, so I can't, I don't have the heart to lose it. Two Spellbook of Fate, this card's really, really broken. That's probably the best card in the deck. It's one of the only offensive Spellbook cards. It's not just a silly power boost. Then you got your one tower and your one star hall. This thing gives you a boost for every time you use a Spellbook. And this one puts one back from the graveyard to the deck to the order to give you a second draw, which is really cool because it kind of gets the deck moving. The Counter Fairy Engine, however, is pretty standard with the three Ariadne, and then just the mess of traps. You got the Solemn Brigade with three strikes, one warning, two Curse Seal of Verdant Spell to deal with, like, uh, just problem cards, uh, like, you know, your Gekis and your, your Twin Twisters and things like that, and then your Ultimate Providence to essentially just negate all the things. And then the rest of the monsters are here pretty much to support Ariadne. You got your Archfiend Eccentric to kind of just help move things along, your Luster Pendulum, which combos extremely well with the Ariadne Absolver. You also have Magical Abductor, that's kind of the glue between the two engines. She's really interesting because she does different things depending on where she is, whether it's in a scale zone or a monster zone. Now she's in a scale zone, she gets a counter for every time you activate a spell card, and because we're playing spell books, we have a mess of spells. And then once you get up to three, you can remove three and then add a pendulum monster from your deck to your hand, which is probably your Ariadne to make sure all your traps free. And if she's on the field, you can do the same thing to remove those three counters in order to uh, what is it? search a level one spellcaster type monster, which is our one-off Veiler in the deck. The other neat thing is she does gain 100 attack every time you activate a spell, or when anyone activates a spell, actually, which means she can actually get really, really big, especially if she's standing next to a star hall. She becomes kind of the giant beat stick of the deck, which just gives you kind of this little bit of a push towards the competitive edge, like I said earlier, because one thing spellbooks have a hard time doing is actually having a win condition, and Magical Abductor is pretty much the win condition of the deck. You're... Uh, spellbooks loop advantage and give her really really big and your traps just keep your opponent from doing anything particularly interesting until they run out of resources then you just smack at them with a giant 3k beat stick over and over and over again until they die the extra deck's pretty standard it's just a bunch of rank fours because you know every once in a while you'll find yourself with usable scales like a, a three and a, and a five or something so you can actually pendulum summon <laughs> so you might actually do this once in a blue moon you know it doesn't need it's neat to have the option and then the rest of the stuff is just interesting different rank monsters except for this one because this one should be something else because the number all for the side deck xyz universe because this is just a really really good card and there's nothing stopping us from using it and it's pretty decent against burning abyss and other decks that you know you're like oh your opponent's gonna make something a bunch of xyz's and you just xyz universe it and you can all this other fun stuff so it's just kind of cool and then we do have ignister and dynaster because uh, i mean once on a blue moon i'm sure we can make these things and then the side deck's just like i said pretty standard with your xyz universe as a fun little tech and you got your shadow prising merry chaos trap hole kind of cater their traps to the right thing, got your extra seal, and your spell vanishing. I don't know if you guys remember this card even exists. It's a really cool old, old counter trap. 
Discard two cards from your hand, or if unless it's Ariadne, then you discard nothing. Negate the activation of a spell card and destroy it. Then you get to check your opponent's hand and deck, and if you find any copies of that card, you get to destroy those two and settle those with the graveyard. So it's like, whoa, you get to like look at their hand and their deck. It's just this really trolly card, and I always want to use it in counter fairies and never seem to ever have room for it, but it is a really fun card and kind of would, you know, help you get knowledge and things. And the rest of this is just, you know, I guess. Uh, you got your two, your two, three standard flow guy fields and two ways to search them because yeah, every once in a while you play against a deck that just these things just really, really, really brick them. <laughs> Alright guys, that was the deck. Now let's duel with it. See how it kind of works. Alright, in order to help me out with this little uh, deck profile, Brian decided to send me all the replays that he had while he was helping me test it. And he actually got some pretty solid duels out of the whole thing, so I figured I would share those with you guys. I had a... I had a, a really bad duel with a Blue Eyes deck on, uh, what do you call it, Dev Pro, when I was playing things like Magic Jammer and Lightning Vortex, which I was going to show you, but eh, it doesn't really work quite the way right, and I don't know, it, just, it sounds like garbage, so I was like, yeah, whatever, I'll just do the YGO Pro, one, or the, uh, yeah, the YGO Pro ones, because they uh, look good, and they uh, are actually good duels, and Ryan actually seems to be better with this deck than I am, please don't ever tell him I said that, that would, uh, <laughs> he would never let me hear that one down. Anyway, so this was against DDDs. If you you know already couldn't tell by all the DDDs as being played over on the other side of the field there, and Ryan's actually doing a pretty solid job of showing off just exactly what the deck is supposed to do when all things kind of go right. And that's you know obs uh, what is it? A magical objector on the field with a couple of boosts. You got your Ariadne and your uh, what do we call it? Luster Pendulum going so that you get a. Uh, bit in the, in the extra deck there, get a search, get uh, pe full pendulum scales, actually get a pendulum summon off, start looping all the spells, getting all the boosts, and pretty much just overwhelming your opponent with attack and defense all at the same time. It's pretty much a perfect storm of how the deck is supposed to work, and I'm really glad he managed to get this duel. As you can see, his Ariadne's, or uh, Ariadne, uh, his abductors are actually getting pretty big, and even though that the a DDD player managed to heal himself for a little bit of life points, uh, is left with only 2200 after one entire swing from Ryan. And because he's pretty much running on like no resources, he's gonna have a hard time dealing with things like Spellbook of Fate, which is going to pretty much deal with all the big monsters that this thing is trying to play with its fusion deck. And the guy just kind of quits eventually because there's just there's no way you can outdo the kind of advantage that Ryan's rolling into. This one's against Psy Frames, and frankly, I don't remember a damn thing that happens because it's Psy Frames and nothing happens. <laughs> that deck is a really interesting one to play against because the way you beat it is simply do nothing because it's an entirely counter-based deck, so if you don't do anything, it actually can't play any of its cards. So all Ryan had to do is try to set up his board as best he could and just hope that the guy couldn't actually negate anything and once he had an established board just do nothing until the guy basically just you know either decks out or or uh has to start discarding stuff and you put him in a situation where he can't actually negate everything you do because you have more advantage than he does using the uh abductor to actually search stuff is pretty good and solemn strike negating hand traps is uh it's a hell of a move actually Ryan's also keeping pressure on his field spell, because if he doesn't have this field spell, the, the side frames also have a hard time uh, playing the deck as well. Ooh, that card of demise drawing three traps was probably the most broke dope thing that Ryan could have done in that situation. <laughs> totally sacky, but that's that's card demise for you. That's a really, really harping on the card card D. Which is actually pretty good in side frames, because they don't want a monster on board, so you gotta draw and just kinda end your turn. Keep swinging at him, buddy. Poor Psy Frames. I don't know what you're gonna do. Is it some jackass outside polluting my audio? Anyway, that's how you win a duel against Psy Frames. And this is the last one's against the Monarchs. Uh, spoiler alert, Ryan actually doesn't win this duel. But uh, it's a very good duel, and it kind of shows you what the deck can do against something that's like clearly a tier one deck like Monarchs. So oh, DDDs are definitely up there. If that was a good build of DDDs, I'm not familiar enough with the deck to be able to make that kind of assertion. However, looking at this Monarch deck, I can definitely tell you that this isn't a janky build of Monarchs. At least not a super janky build of Monarchs. 
Marionettes. This might be against Marionettes Green Catchers. I actually don't remember if this was uh, Ryan and him dual muling each other or not. So if that's my, if, if, if Fike <laughs> is Marion, then then uh, it is a janky build of Monarch. So there's there's no way he built a good deck because he's just garbage at this game. <laughs> But uh, we got that main decked Vanity's Fiend swinging for 2400. It's absolutely doing nothing against this deck, except maybe locking out the uh, once per duel pendulum summon that it can do, but that's really just to get an extra monster on board. It doesn't actually do anything with the pendulum summons once it does it, unless maybe you go into lightning to swing over something, but eh, it's not how this deck works. Getting all the advantage by looping all the spellbooks, because that's just what spellbooks do. They definitely thin the deck. Ooh, swing and search. Having a searchable version of Book of Moon really does help against the current meta because there's a lot of monsters in this game right now that have really good attack power and really, really shitty defense power. So Book of Fate is definitely a great card, and especially right now. Because even look at that Monarch Erebus, has only got a thousand defense. Oh no, Ryan. I don't know what you're going to do. It's looking pretty grim, and I think this is where he runs out of juice, because he just can't quite get his guy up to snuff. He's sure he's going to get a surge, and he's going to set his cards, but if the guy pretty much top decks of anything that's gonna remotely useful, we are uh, not in business anymore, and he gets the spell he needs to kind of go off and get the monsters on board required to tribute summon an Erebus and swing for what is the exact amount of what's left of Ryan's life points. Boo! Stupid monarchs. <laughs> All right, guys, I hope you like the deck profile. Just something different. It actually ends up being pretty powerful. Uh, I do enjoy playing it. It kind of exhausts your opponent and leaves them with nothing. And you got Abductor, and it's really big. You just keep poking with that. And she's actually pretty large by the end of the duel. But anyway, guys, let me know in the comments below what you guys think of the deck. And I'm looking forward to see if you guys have any cool ideas and, you know, maybe come up with something fun for it. But anyway, let me know in the comments below what you guys think. And remember, guys, if you don't troll the meta, who will? I'll see you guys next time. It's really hot, I'm very tired, and I, I, I don't care. And she's a dark level 6 spellcaster, of course. But what we really care about is her effect, which is... This card can be special summoned from your hand by discarding one card. No once per turn clause? Okay!